Hi, this is Jill from the North Woods. What do we do with all the contradictory advice we get? That's what we'll talk about today. When you encounter difficulties and contradictions, do not try to break them, but bend them with gentleness and time. St. Francis de Sales. Today we're going to talk about contradictions in the world of self-help. I don't know about you. I'm a big listener to self-help podcasts, read a lot of books, as you can probably tell. But what happens when we keep getting advice that's completely contradictory from each other? We heard Bobby Knight said, be negative. But Norman Vincent Peale says, be positive. Some advice says, try many things and have lots of projects. While others say to ruthlessly eliminate all the noise and projects that you don't need to do out of your life. Some people say time track, but, and other people say, no, don't time track. Be flexible. I remember listening to people talk about eat the frog, the famous phrase, if you have a frog to eat, I believe this is Mark Twain, eat the frog first, meaning get the bad thing out of your day first so that you don't have to sit there and think about it all the time. I get that. But you know what? I do a better job when I have a frog, a tough project, something I'm not looking forward to doing a little bit more awake more in the afternoon. I try to tackle those types of situations later. But when it comes to physical things I have to do, I do prefer to eat the frog and do the harder thing first. So it just depends with me what thing I find most beneficial. Some people say treat yourself and other people say be stoic, tough, save money and stay on the plan. There's so many contradictions in our lives. I think it's funny in the world of self-help about how we can figure out what it is we're supposed to do. And so we're going to talk a little bit about how to weed our way through all these self-help books, how to get what we're looking for, and how to come up with at least a small plan outside the world of self-help. And then we can look for guides and books that will help us along our way. It's funny, this kind of came about when I was reading a few articles. One of them was on Headspace, and it says, don't get caught in the self-improvement trap. Instead, we shouldn't look to to constantly improve ourselves. And it wasn't just Headspace that had this idea. There were other places, too, that mentioned this. The fact that we should focus on what's important to us, that we should accept ourselves, that we should meditate on the present and be mindful of what's going on right now. And by saying self-help, are we accepting ourselves? Are we getting ripped up in this illusion of that we're not good enough? I don't know that that's what self-help is saying. I mean, I never took it that way. Do you take it that way? I never really thought about self-help as a means of picking on myself. GQ even did a story, why self-help is making us more unhappy. It comes from a psychologist, Sven Brinkman, who had a message that said, quit being so self-absorbed. The idea is that all this self-help craze is just about us thinking about us all the time and that we shouldn't be focusing on ourselves. We should be looking more out in the world, how we can help other people, how we can be part of a bigger organism of the world. And by just focusing on ourselves, it's making us self-centered. It's making us depressed. It's making us feel like we're not good enough again. There that is. And we're not really helping the world. So again, if we get away from this idea of self-help, which he considers it to be a Western concept, that we will do more for other people, the world, and we won't just find ourselves as boring, average, what all these other negative terms could be if we look deep inside of ourselves. And so again, he has some good points too. I'm not really against any one of these points that are being talked about in these books. But the real question is, what is self-help? How do I see productivity tips and self-improvement and all these things? And why I don't necessarily agree with it. If you listen to this podcast and Small Steps with God, you'll know I am firmly in the side of things that we should stretch out, that we should help other people, that we should be there for other people and help them reach their goals. We should also stop being so self-centered. But I don't think there's anything wrong with looking at the things that we can improve about ourselves. Because if we improve, 
our procrastination, our organizational method, how we store information, how we treat other people, aren't we going to do better at also helping the world? If you become someone who's amazing, maybe a Steve Jobs or someone out there who's just changing the world for the better, but we're not effective. If we don't manage our time, if we let our negative aspects of ourselves just spin around and keep us in the wrong gear with the wrong topics, with the wrong productivity, we'll we'll be wonderful. We'll think of the next great idea and then we'll never have the means to get it done. So even if we want to help other people, I do think the common method of building on our strengths, I don't want you to become another person, but build on the things that you're great at Fix up some of the things you're not so great at so that you at least can get the bare minimum work done on it. And that will lead you to making the world a better place. So you don't have to do this in a self-centered way. I think that you can come about this with a real plan. Strangely enough, I found this fantastic article when I was looking around for articles about this from Avery. Those are the people who make all the labels. What are they talking about in trying to figure out how to come up with a plan to help develop our lives. And I'll put the link in the show notes. But what it talks about when you're trying to decide which direction to go in is that it says that first you have to basically assess where you're at. If you're doing this for a team, if you're doing this for yourself, what are our strengths and weaknesses? What are our, what are the things we're good at and not so good at? I had a friend at work At my last job, she handed out the Strength Finder books, and then we sat around for a couple of meetings and talked about it. The way that that book helped our team is we found out people like me were talkers and some other people were writers. And why are we having everyone doing everything when we have some clear strengths? So the very first step, according to this article and some others I saw, is to really understand where we're at. Where's the team at? and assess that information. Because if we don't know where we're at on the map, we don't know how to get to the next thing. Then we want to take a look at our goals. What is it you're trying to do? Are you trying to get a new job? Are you trying to retire? Are you trying to decide on a new hobby? Or are you planning to start your own business? Have kids, get married, whatever your next goal is. So we have to know where we are at now. We have to know where we were going to go. Without any sort of goals, we won't know. So here's the next step. That's where we're going to have to find our resources. And I think that's the part where all these self-help contradictions sound terrible, but actually probably have really good points. Now, for me, I'm a procrastinator. I also tend to look on the rosy side of things all the time. So maybe the Bobby Knight advice of being a little negative will help me because I'm always very good at looking at the positive. So then you have to find the resources that are speaking to the actual issues you are having to getting to your goal. You you figure out your goal and you sort of write down a few steps to getting to your goal, writing down a few obstacles towards getting towards your goal, you'll see what kinds of resources you need to take the very next small steps. But in the example I just gave, sometimes it's not the advice you're thinking you need. Sometimes if you're kind of a squishy person, you need some tough advice. Maybe if you're a really tough person, maybe you need some advice to be sensitive to other people. Think about them, listen better, work with other people. If you have a family and you're thinking of starting a family business, but you're pretty gruff and you're pretty independent, maybe taking some advice on how to listen to other people would be more beneficial. Finding the right resources, not just the ones that speak to you, but the ones that challenge you that's the right way to go. So when we look at all this advice and we look at all the contradictions of the advice, which direction do you need to go in? Are you someone who's pretty minimalist and you don't have enough things around to get the jobs done that you want to get done? Maybe that's where you need to look at the kitchen of the mind and start planning and preparing and purchasing your next step. Or maybe you're someone like me who has a lot of stuff around and it's time to get rid of some of that stuff. But once you know who you are, step one, and once you know where you want to go, question number three on the resources is going to be a lot easier to know. And again, 
Think about what's going to challenge you. If I sometimes even think about that, if I were to go see a business counselor or a personal counselor, what would be the things that they would be telling me is really my next challenge? (laughs) Sometimes you get some free advice from your friends who tell you what your next challenge should be. But again, once you know what it is you need to do in order to start taking those steps, that's where you're going to find the right resources that will help you to that next step. According to this article, step number four is coming up with a strategy. Quote, what are the small steps, yay, between goals? So we want to develop a smart plan, which again is specific, measurable, attainable, relevant. That means that each goal should align to the bigger plan and time-based. When do we expect to get those things done? So having a smart goal when it comes to our personal life, when it comes to our work life, that's going to help us actually get the things we're looking to get. It may sound tough, particularly if you're looking at doing something fun. Like I'm going to start a podcast. I did have smart goals in mind. I knew what podcast I was going to create. To be honest with you, measurable, I just told myself I was going to do it for three years. And at the end of three years, I could decide if I'm going to keep doing it. So I sort of set myself on this path. You got three years, figure it out. Well, you know what? Last episode was three years and I've decided to keep going. I might have to think about a new measurable goal, but right now I don't have one. That's going to be something for me. Is it attainable? How are we going to be able to create those steps to get the goals? Relevant, if you're starting a new podcast, you know, it's things like buying microphones, getting a desk, finding a quiet place. You know what those steps should be. Research them if you don't know. And then time-based, setting a deadline. So as soon as for this podcast, I set a deadline about when I wanted to make this podcast, I knew exactly when I had to get everything done. This article says step five is evaluate, which means you're going to look at your progress. You're going to see how you're doing. You're going to look back and make sure you're on the right path still. You want to make sure that you didn't divert. You didn't get off course a little bit. Again, if you walk on a big hike, you're taking that Pacific hike for a thousand miles. If you get one degree off, you will be completely lost in a very short period of time. So you want to make sure that you reflect on how you're doing So you know if you're still on track with your goals. But in the end, you don't have to listen to everybody's advice. Pick certain people who speak to you. I mean, there's people on the religious side who speak to me. There's people on the productivity side that really speak to me. Find your people. Find the people who really share maybe your problems or understand exactly the kinds of things you're going through. You know, for me, a lot of people have the problem that they have very little time because they're having a family. I don't have a family. And so that particular concern is not there. But I do understand time limits because I work a lot. I work very hard. And so I understand not always having the time you want to do other things. Or when you're in a job, try to find those people who can be your sort of virtual mentors. People in the work world, people whose advice you like, people who are on YouTube or Twitter, someone who really speaks to you and see if you can't use them as a way of finding the right kind of advice. So my challenge to you is think about one area where you could really use some help, some kind of a weakness, something that you need to tackle and see if you can write up this very short plan for tackling that one thing. And you're always welcome to email me and let me know what that thing is, because I could probably find a book and do a review of it to see if it's something that's going to help you out. All right, everyone. Thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please remember to tell a friend about the podcast. I'm trying to grow the audience. I'm trying to get a community together. I would love someday, maybe that's my next plan, to have a community where we can talk about ideas and talk about struggles. But it all has to start with someone talking to me. I've gotten a few emails and contacts from people like you and a few nice comments on the third anniversary. But remember, you can contact me anytime you want and tell me the direction you'd like to see this podcast go in. And remember, macheting our way through a jungle of contradictory ideas starts with small steps.